Hello everyone and welcome again to my channel. This time I wanted to talk about the Defender of the Faith. But before I do that, I want to give some credit for my last video. That was made in conjunction with an expert from Ireland who is trained in psychology and therapy, has good credentials, and has done lots of research. So they definitely helped to shape that video and I thank them for that. And going forward, I anticipate making more videos with their input. This time I couldn't arrange my schedule to talk with him, so this one is done by myself. But the next one, the theme is already set, and we're going to discuss that, and we might wind up redoing this one uh, after I get their input. But I just wanted to get this one done and out there, so I'm going to talk about the Defender of the Faith. Uh, in my opinion, there are different types of Defenders of the Faith. One of that type would be a true believer, who is highly motivated, and the second type would cross over, I believe, into the narcissist or psychopath, and perhaps in conjunction with a true believer. So the video I plan on doing next, which I'm waiting for uh, the input on, is on the mind of the leader of a high control group. And that's where we're going to discuss things like narcissism and psychopaths, I imagine. So this will be my own version of that for people who are defenders of the faith. And I'm going to have this discussion for a couple of reasons. One is because to some level I used to be a defender of the faith but not to the level that some people out there are. For example, there are defenders of the faith that have no problem engaging in illegal activities to try and hamper the efforts of those who are getting the truth out there. I was never such an individual, and I always held those types of people in derision. And I, to some extent, still do, but now I might have a little bit more understanding. I don't know. So anyways, defenders of the faith, they're the ones who... Usually speaking, they're true believers, they're very firmly convicted, and they're very firmly convinced, and they're willing to ignore all proof of what of the fact that what, they're, what they believe in is wrong. Sometimes this is because the cognitive dissonance is so strong. Sometimes it's because they've bought in at such a level, there's such an emotional attachment that it's just um, hard, if not impossible, for them to let go of it. Whatever the reason, the actions that result are that they go after those who would try to disprove their beliefs. Some of them may do this on a logical level, trying to argue logic. Others may do this on a childish or perhaps even a legal level, doing things such as breaking into computers, maybe perhaps breaking into property or doing such things as that, to try to embarrass or discredit the, uh, their opponent. Uh, anybody who engages in the latter type of activity has already lost their argument because they've admitted to the fact that they don't have enough evidence to disprove what the person is saying. So any type of person that engages in any type of activity that is malicious, they've lost before they've even started. But the question becomes is why would they do that? Well, as I think about it, my opinion is that they do these things because they have personality disorders such as narcissism or perhaps they are psychopaths. Now those type of personality disorders make it so that people literally have no fellow feeling, no empathy. They hold themselves to an entirely different rule than they hold everybody else to. At least such is my current limited understanding. So being that way, if they think they're in the right, they will go to any extent possible and they will have no problems with their conscience about doing whatever they think they need to to accomplish their goals. And as such, when people are on the receiving end of their behavior, it's interpreted as evil, it's interpreted as malicious, and it usually elicits a response of anger, and deservedly so. But the problem is those people's minds most likely are not working the way a normal, rational, functional person's mind is working. Normal people have some sense of what they're doing to others, they can empathize, they can feel, and they act accordingly. So you don't act to purposefully hurt people when you're doing things. However, when you're a psychopath or a narcissist, those mechanisms are either broken or perhaps sometimes completely don't exist. So that being the case, that allows people with those um, conditions to do things that most of us would be shocked at and would never consider doing. So that, in my mind, is one subset of a defender of the faith. The other is just a true believer who is highly motivated. 
That's the type of defender of the faith that I was. I would have discussions with people that would disagree. I went into those discussions knowing that I was right because those in high control groups always know that they're right. And I would go out of my way to persuasively provide support for my position. And when things came up that I could not disprove or did not know about, I typically speaking would use a standard line of I will do some more research. Most often in my own mind I was able to rationalize whatever I found and to me I could make it have some sort of a logical sense. Of course whoever I was having the discussion with in whatever the format would probably see through that or there may have been times I may have been persuasive enough to have convinced them. I don't really know. But the mindset of the defender of the faith has become interesting to me for a number of reasons. Not just because this is part of my past, but because I now have been affected by individuals who are defenders of the faith that I think may be narcissists or psychopaths. And they, they have demonstrated this by their actions as former videos have shown. So highlighting their actions is something I have already done. There's no need to do that any further. But coming to this realization, I actually have pity for these individuals. They are devoting an extreme amount of effort to something that is ultimately fantasy, to something that's not true. So put yourself in that position for a while. Imagine that you devote a massive amount of energy to defending something that isn't true. So let's put it into perspective. Let's say that you spend 75% of your time defending the reality of the tooth fairy. What good is that going to accomplish you in your life? Ultimately none. You're going to be a source of mockery. You're going to be wasting your life, a time that you could be advancing yourself somehow, learning something, becoming a better person, building something for yourself, adding to the community. All those positive things that you could be doing, you're going to be throwing that time completely away. And at the end of the day, no matter how much time you spend defending the Tooth Fairy, well, the Tooth Fairy still is just a fantasy, no matter how badly you want it to be something different. So for the individuals that do that, they oftentimes will act in ways that will make us angry, that will make us upset. And the honest reaction we should have, and I'm coming to the grips with this myself, is that we should feel pity for them, even when they go to the point of causing us harm, which some of them will try to do. But when these things happen, just imagine that they're doing these things defending the tooth fairy. We would probably laugh it off because of how foolish it is. And when they resort to actions that are malicious, it's because specifically they know that they cannot defeat arguments that have been presented and they have no counter arguments that have any weight to them. So they basically act like little children and throw temper tantrums and behave in the manner that they do. And really that's it's, it's a pitiable state because some of these individuals no doubt have a considerable amount of talent that could be utilized for something good, either for themselves or for others but instead it's being completely and totally wasted in the sad attempts to harass people. So how many people are defenders of the faith in one sense or the other? I don't really have a good answer for that question. I don't really know. Um, so those are just some things I was thinking about because of experiences I've been through, because of who I used to be, because of what I used to do, but also some of us will come across these defenders of the faith in our daily lives. And our natural reaction when they react in uh, foolish ways at times is going to be to get mad. And that's understandable. But maybe in the back of our head if we think, well imagine that they're saying these things about the tooth fairy. Well then how mad would you be about that? You would instead view them as really foolish. And you would not really waste your time on them. And there comes a point which maybe that's the better way to view some of these defenders of the faith. I don't know. This is not to say that they are not intelligent people, because they certainly are. And this is not to say that they are not sincere people, because I have no doubt that many of them truly are sincere. But ultimately, what they are trying to defend has no more validity than defending the tooth fairy. So, they might make us mad, but if we put it into perspective and realize that what they're doing is not really changing our mind, and on top of that, it's not really benefiting us, and there's only so much they can do to irritate us. So, ultimately, the only person they're hurting in wasting their time like that is themselves. They're spending time that could otherwise be productively used to do nothing more than waste time. So anyways, that's just a thought. I, this, when, Once again, when I get some input, this video might get 
redone or there might be a second version. I don't know. But those are my thoughts for now. Thanks for watching.